Hey everyone, this is Debran. I'm a software engineer by profession and quite recently I got hooked onto the FPV drone flying hobby. <coughs> uh, yeah, so a few days ago I got my Yishin Tyro 79 and this is a great little quad, right? I, I've, uh, I've been flying it quite a bit recently and I'm enjoying it quite a lot. Uh, however, when I was first setting this up, uh, the VTX was a bit of a hassle, right? I couldn't get the smart audio working, and it's supposed to have the smart audio connected, uh, and you just have to go to the beta file and configure it, which I tried to do, but that was for some reason not working. And uh, I tried a bunch of things, but I think that uh, it's I think that for my unit, it might not just be connected, and so I'm waiting on the delivery of uh, my solder, also soldering iron, uh, before I open this up and try to look inside and see if that's the case. In the meanwhile, I still have to fly it, right? So I have to configure the VTX somehow, and it does come with a little button on the side, which if I'll see if I can show it to you. Yeah. It's this, this is the small button outside right above the USB port. So that's the VTX. So the USB port is of course connected to the flight controller. And right above that there's the VTX and then this is the button you can use to configure this. Right? And uh, so I tried using that uh, and I found a manual for the Dyro 79 on the Bangor website and I tried to follow that uh, but the first problem I ran into was the manual mentions that the Dyro 79 VTX should have three LEDs to indicate status red, green and blue whereas mine only has two uh, so that was the problem Right, and after quite a lot more searching, uh, I just probably had to spend a couple of hours on this. Uh, but after doing that, I was finally able to find another manual. Uh, and I think that's for a more up to date version of the VTX, which mentions that it only has two LEDs and then goes into details about how those LEDs are used both find the status and configure it and i'll put a link to both of those manuals below in the in the video description for anyone uh, who might want to give them a look right uh so yeah I, but even with the correct manual it still took me a couple of tries before i understood what was happening and uh, how the configuration worked and uh <coughs> i so, the other thing, the thing is, uh, I got into this hobby by looking at videos of some of the other, some of the amazing creators uh, in the community, right? I mean, I got started by, after uh, viewing a video by Joshua Powell on how to do some of the basic tricks uh, with FPV and that. That was my starting point. I still remember it because I was searching for something else and that popped up and I was just mesmerized by how amazing the footage footage looked of the different tricks. And that was around four or five months ago and since then I've just been hooked and there are there are so many great videos on YouTube on how to uh, build quads from scratch, how to debug issues, how to do other tricks. Uh, and just a lot of great videos uh, and it's only been because of those videos and the creators who told trying to make those videos that I've been able to get so far uh, and so I thought that having figured this out it might be helpful to others if I were to show how to configure the VTX on this new version of the Tyro 79 or whatever version I have uh, I assume there are two versions because there are two different ways of configuring the VTX for this. Alright, so to get started, I'll plug this in and I'll 
we'll go over how the tools LED LEDs on the VTX are used to indicate or uh, used to show the status of the three parameters the channel, the band, and then the power output. Uh, so, first we'll look at that and then we'll see how to configure it. Right, so let me plug this in. So, as you might see, there's two LEDs that are blinking. Uh, you might not be able to see that from here, but from here, you might see that there's two LEDs blinking here, right? Uh, the red and the blue. And together, they give you an indication of what the configuration is, and also you can use them to configure those values as well uh, the channel, the band, and the power. So, the red LED indicates what parameter is either being shown or configured and then the blue LED indicates the value of that parameter. So looking here, the red LED, when it blinks once, that means that the blue LED will now show you the value of the channel. Uh, the red LED when it blinks twice means the blue LED will show you the value of the band and then when the red LED blinks three times the blue LED will show the value of the power of right so as you can see here in a second so red LED blinks once and the blue LED blinks not seven times and that's seven because I've set um, this VTX to be on channel 7 and let's wait for the band permission to come yeah 2 1 2 so that's band 2 right and then let's wait for it to show the power output so that was the channel this is the band three times 1 2 and that's 2 so 2 is essentially 100 milliwatt so it's I think it's 25 milliwatt 100 milliwatt and let me see, I should have the information here. Yeah, 200 milliwatt and 300 milliwatt according to the manual. So that's how it shows. And configuring it is basically done similarly. So the first thing you do is you long press this button, right? And uh, once you've pressed it for around two or three seconds, both of these LEDs, the blue and the red, will. Uh, light up at the same time to indicate that it has now moved into the configuration mode So let's do that now Yep, see how those in the LEDs are both lit up and now if I release this uh, That cycle with the red LED first blinks once and then the blue LED gives you the information and then the red LED blinks twice that stop now what's happening is the red LED is only blinking once and then the blue LED is blinking one two, seven times uh, and what that means is you're basically in configuration mode for the channel so now let's say I want to move the channel to channel one uh, so what I'll do is I'll press the button until the blue LED only blinks once so let's do that now also, uh, if you wait for around 30 more seconds, uh, it will automatically move out of the configuration mode. And so now it's back to its cycle of showing all the different parameters. So let's go back into the configuration mode. Yep. And let's move the band or rather the channel to channel one. So I press this and one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight. I press this once more, and so it only blinks once, right? So now this is in the channel. So the channel has been set to channel one. Now, if you long press that button again, we will move on to the configuration for the band. So let's do that now. Long press. Yep. And so the red LED now is blinking twice to indicate that it's in band configuration mode and when the blue LED blinks twice to say it's in band 2 
let's move this to band 4 right press it once so one two three and then i press it twice now the blue led should bring four times and that's it that's basically uh band 4 which is selected now if i long press it again it will move into the power selection mode so right now it's configured for 100 milliwatts so let's say i want to move it back down to 25 right so that's basically i want to go from uh, kind of so the so the values list is 25 100 200 and 300 and i want to go back to 25 so i'm going to press this three times once first press it will go to 200 second press it will go to 300 milliwatts and the fourth press it will go back to 25 so let's do that okay so i waited more than 30 seconds and then that sort of reset so let's go back to the power selection configuration long press okay so this is channel selection long press band selection long press power selection and it set power level 2 so 3 3 4 and 5 and so that's so the 3 it is for 3 blinks for power mode and then 1 for 25 milliwatt which is the first option and now if I long press again it's saved and now it's back to its regular loop where it's going to show the different values so let's see from the start again so one ch band channel one twice band four power level power level 25 and yeah so that's basically it and i'll do this once more to move this back into the original configuration i had which was channel 7 band 2 and then power level 100 so and, and that will also give you a chance to see how it's done one more time That's band two, and finally the power level. Hundred milliwatts, and that's it. We're done. So, channel seven, band two or band B, and then hundred milliwatts, and yeah, that's it. So I hope you found that useful. And uh, I hope to keep making more of these videos as I learn more about this hobby. And I also have a bunch of videos of me flying, but I fly rather poorly right now. I fly very poorly right now, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if or when I'll be posting those. Uh, but yeah, let's see how it goes. That's it.